I really like sitting down while I'm preaching, but you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Bob was sitting on the plane at Cleveland waiting to fly to Chicago when a guy took a seat beside him. The guy was an emotional wreck, pale, hands shaking in fear. What's the matter? Afraid of flying, Bob asked. No, it's not that. I've been transferred to Chicago. The people are crazy there, right? Lots of shootings, gangs, race riots, drugs, poor schools, and the highest crime rate in the USA. But Bob replied, I've lived in Chicago all my life. It's not as bad as the media says. Find a nice home, go to work, mind your own business, and roll your kids in a nice private school. I've worked there for 14 years and never had the slightest trouble. The guy relaxed and stopped shaking. He said, oh, thank you, I've been worried to death. But if you've lived and worked there all those years and say it's okay, I'll take your word for it. What do you do for a living? He says, I'm a tail gunner on a Budweiser truck. <laughs> I don't think that's a true story. I doubt it. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your, hearts, let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Would you bow your heads with me? Dear Lord, we thank you today for these morsels of your word. We pray that they will encourage us in everything that we face. We pray that you'll bless the, the words to our hearts, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. On another occasion, Jesus said in Mark chapter 4, he said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? This was after he calmed the storm. Life is full of storms. Full of storms. Did you ever have, hear somebody say, don't worry about it? Did it help? Probably not. <laughs> Did you stop worrying? Probably not. This is about fear and worry. If you're going to worry about something, you're going to worry. Does worry help? No. Have you ever worried your way out of anything? No. Maybe worry makes you feel better. Probably not. I can't convince you not to worry. I can suggest not worrying. I can advise not worrying. I can say it in Italian. Non a pensare. Did you know that, John? John's Italian. Non a pensare. That means don't worry about it. So I can't convince you not to worry. And I can even say, non a pensare, but it probably doesn't help. But things from God's word should help if you want to stop worrying. Some of us don't want to stop worrying. We just let things get to us. Matthew 6, 25 to 27, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Obviously, God doesn't want us to worry. That's not part of God's plan for you. God wants us to have faith not to worry. Sometimes what we see... Uh, is what we want to see. It's easy to get upset when things don't go the way we wish they would. Then we worry about what's going to happen next. And this election is a good example. What's going on in Washington and the rest of the country? Plenty of things to worry about. Socialism being embraced in our schools, especially in colleges and universities. Socialism and its big brother Marxism are ungodly movements. They don't believe in private property. They consider uh, any and all religion their enemy. Even the nuclear family is their enemy. BLM, a Marxist movement, considers the nuclear family to be racist. 
One of the most hideous things in our schools is encouraging kids as young as five to question their gender. It's hideous. Amen? It's hideous. Gender treatment in kids as young as eight to prevent puberty. <sighs> I have to take a breath after that one. Then they're mutilated when they're 18. Trying to turn men into women and women into men. It's hideous. God made them male and female. Yes. And you know, Sweden and some of the Scandinavian countries have outlawed that. They had the good sense to realize, and those puberty blockers are dangerous. A young girl went into, went into um, osteoporosis because of the puberty blockers they gave her because she wanted to be a boy. And then they don't want the parents to know. Don't tell your parents. It's hideous. Plenty to be worried about. Border security has been abandoned. We can't take care of the whole world. There's no attempt now to control the border. It hasn't been for the last three years anyway. In this country alone, we have murdered 66,000 unborn children. One out of every 66 deaths in the world is an American abortion. One out of every four deaths in America is an American abortion. A quarter of the deaths is abortion. Half of the deaths in the world, half of them are from abortions. Abortion is a leading cause of death in the world. It kills as many people as all other causes of death combined. We have lost more Americans through abortions, 64 times more than we did in all of our 12 wars combined. 64 times. The world kills more people through abortion than all of the deaths in America combined, 22 times as many. God will surely judge 67, I think it's 65 actually, murdered innocents. We live in a nation that considers abortion a sacred right. That's what's driving one side of this election. God help us. Gay marriage. And they're being married in church by a minister. And they're all smiling and happy about that. Plenty of things to be worried about. We worry about paying bills. During COVID, we worried about having church. We worried if they're doing the right thing if we did have church. We had people sat in every other row here and we had masks out in the back and signs on the door. And we had three very, very serious uh, people with COVID pneumonia. We had to pray them out of the hospital. John was in there for 16 days with COVID pneumonia. 16 days. Who else? Ruth was in there for what, three days? COVID pneumonia. We prayed her out of there. Uh, Bob. Bob was in there two weeks. I think six days. Six days. We prayed him out of there. It was dangerous. It was dangerous. A million people died from COVID pneumonia. Things were looking bright under the last president. Now it seems that this country is in a steep decline, a moral decline. Amen. My button's back there. So you'll have to amen on your own. <laughs> Plenty to worry about. The scripture counsels us not to be afraid. Not to worry. Joshua 1 9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So that's negative and positive. Don't, um, don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. But be strong. Be strong and courageous. Negative and positive. Fear and discouragement come from the world. Strength from our God. Isaiah 41 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. 
I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So I don't mind telling you that I get dismayed sometimes. I get discouraged. Actually, one thing that gets to me is if things aren't going well at the church. Fortunately, things are going well at the church. Praise God. But I have to admit that in the past I was discouraged when people left this church. We had 35 when I came here. Five of them died. Five of them moved away. Then another family moved away because we didn't have ministry for teens. And that was kind of down. I got kind of down about that. But we hover around 20. And I'm so glad when people come and people stay. It's, all, it's awesome. And, but I'm encouraged by people like Boyd. Like Mark and Sherry. Nancy. It's encouraging. John over there and Stephanie. They come and they stay. That's so awesome. It just, it just lifts me up. God has blessed this church with faithful people. And this church is a blessing to them. We bless each other. We care. And we encourage each other. That's what a good church does. You know, an awesome, dynamic, fabulous preacher doesn't, isn't what really a pastor is all about. Maybe, a, maybe an evangelist, but what a pastor is all about is how he cares for the people. And, uh, hmm? <laughs> I do, I really do. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says not to worry about three things. These are all personal things. Life, nourishment, and clothing. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than, more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? So instead of dwelling on the problems that we face, aches and pains, political stuff, instead of dwelling on this, and there's many of them. If I was going around with a microphone, you could always tell me about bad things. Instead of dwelling on those things, we should dwell on the goodness of God. Dwelling on it. Not just acknowledging God's goodness to us, but being consumed with His goodness. We have a God in heaven who gave us life, who loves us, cares for us, sent His Son to die for us, and has a place in heaven for us. Wow. In comparison, the mundane things that we worry about are minuscule. We still have our problems, sometimes a new one every day, but the awesome prospect of spending eternity with Him in heaven has to outweigh all of our problems. Can any one of you by worrying, verse 27, add a single hour to your life? Actually, you might subtract some time from your life by worrying because stress is harmful to your body. Our worry doesn't accomplish anything. Nothing. Worry doesn't solve anything. It doesn't help anything. Worrying can be harmful to the body. Stress causes illness. Verse 28, And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and gone tomorrow, is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? Who's going to win the election? Verse 32, it doesn't say that in there, by the way. <laughs> For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. They run after them, but God blesses you with them. Jesus Jesus gave us the antidote for worry in verse 33. But seek first his kingdom 
and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So it says, seek first, or you could say first seek. The priority of the life of the believer has to be seeking the kingdom of God. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Seeking both the kingdom on earth and the one that is to come. The object of our seeking make heaven our goal. Aim life toward the kingdom of heaven. Press toward it. Seek for the glory, honor, immortality, and fellowship with God. Make heaven and heavenly blessings far more, far more desirable than earthly comforts, or I could add firstly combats. This life is brief, brief and transitory, and though we are immersed in it physically, our seeking, our heart, should be wrapped around the glory that is to come. We must seek the things of God more than our own things. If they come into, comp into competition, we must remember to which we are to give priority. Then it says, seek righteousness. God's righteousness is holiness. It is his right way. It is an objective truth about him and about the world. His righteousness is to be sought. Uh, the, the thought that we could conform to it and live by it. The effect of his, uh, the effect of seeking his righteousness is to live out the righteousness of Christ, given to us freely by his perfect life and death on the cross for our sins. Ours is to repent and believe, calling on the name of the Lord, and then bearing fruit in keeping with repentance. These things will be given to you as well. Seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness is a full-time job. We do not have the time, energy, mental capacity to worry about all these things. This is what the world, the pagans, worry about. And it's a dead end. Part of the hell of unbelief is to never be satisfied to be always anxious for more than you have, God rescues us from that when we turn to his kingdom and his righteousness. God knows what we need. We think that we know what we need. We know what we want. <laughs> but that may not be what we really need. God knows. Everything that we get is a blessing. God doesn't owe us anything. We're blessed with anything that we get. He doesn't owe us a thing. We owe him our whole life. We owe him everything. Life is hard, but God is good. You can't out hard the goodness of God. We are his. We belong to him. He paid a heavy price for ownership in us. He will take care of us. He does it in his time and in his way. Verse 34, do not worry. Be happy. We win. Read the end of the book. Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask you to stand and Richie's going to put the words up for Psalm 23, and I would like us to recite it together because this is a very encouraging saying, Psalm 23. If you can see that, I have the NIV. That's a new king. And uh, so we, our words might, might not match exactly, but let's say it together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. 
He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before thee, me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yea, though, though the election goeth not my way, I will fear not. <laughs> For thou hast everything under control. I'm just saying, let's not be afraid. Let's not worry. Get ourselves all upset. If it goes our way, that's great. We go the way we think it should. We, not, we not, might not all have the same way that we'd like it to be. But I'm saying to fear not. Don't be afraid of that. Don't worry about it. Non a pensare. My eyes will see the face of God. Father God, we thank you that we've been in your presence today. We have heard your word today. Put it into our hearts, Lord. We don't have anything to be afraid of, Lord. We have mundane things, but we know that your will is not that we worry and be afraid. Because you said to the disciples in that storm, why are you so afraid? So Lord, help us. Help us not to be afraid because we know you don't want us to. So help us with that, Lord. And just we just ask your blessings on everybody that's here and the ones that are not. And um, keep us from being in fear. Help us to remember to vote and to pray about the election. And the other things that are happening, too. And uh, bring us back safely on Wednesday when we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen.